Alright, so welcome to game 17. Game 16 we're going to skip, but needless to say, Steinitz won that game and is now up 10 to 6. Um, I think because I think the rules are 20 games, so best of 20. So anyone who gets 10.5 points, they win the match. So Steinitz just needs a draw out of the last four games. Shouldn't be too difficult. And we have another Evans Gambit. And it's going to follow the same pattern as the last games. B4, bishop takes, c3, bishop a5, castles, queen to f6. And we've seen this many times already. Queen a4, and Steinitz, for some sicko reason, goes right back into this horrendous position that he had last game. Like, I don't know what he's thinking. Um, sorry, somehow I messed the position up. Oh, d5, sorry, I skipped this move. Knight a3, c6, rook a d1. Now, I don't know what version of chess he's playing where he thinks this is good, but it's not. <laughs> and the same type of thing that happened last game happens in this game, uh, where black is kind of just totally boxed in. This bishop is a complete piece of garbage. Steinitz's match strategy was not ideal in this match. Uh, f f6, bishop, G, bishop to b3 with ideas of some kind of mates later, perhaps. g6, knight c4. King g7, a4, knight f7, knight takes b6, pawn takes, bishop takes, king takes. Uh, and now, white to move. What move would you play here? Pause your video, think it over a little bit. Alright, so, Steinitz plays a very nice move. Sorry, Chigorin plays a very nice move here. If you notice, this bishop's out of play. This queen's out of play. This rook's pretty much out of play. So, if we can find a way to get to this king, he has no pieces to defend himself. And Chigorin realized that and played the very nice knight takes e5. The point is, if pawn takes, we're going to blast open the center with f4, and this king is going to be dead meat against our rook's and our queen. Uh, we can even turn on Houdini just to see an example variation. And you see, it, it just thinks it's over. King to g7, pawn takes pawn. It doesn't know how to defend. There's no way to use these pieces. h5, queen c4, sneaking into f7. It actually is mate 9. It's that hopeless. So Steinitz... Steinitz did the right thing and didn't take the knight, but clearly this position is a, it's a total disaster. Knight c4. I mean, just look, the, the material is even. This bishop is blocked behind the pawns. It's basically completely hopeless. But watch what happens. b5, pawn takes, queen a7, and b6. And now look at it. Oh my god. This bishop doesn't even live. It's barely on the board anymore. Queen a4, queen c5, rook e8, f3, queen a2, knight e3. Like, as long as that bishop doesn't get out, black is toast. Eventually, he's going to be toast. Uh, rook to b1, queen f7, knight back to c4, rook a4, a nice move, putting some pressure on that knight, but just rook to b4 and doesn't, doesn't help much. Queen to d4, king g8, knight e3, rook a3, rook a4, rook b3. Now we cannot let him get that guy. Be careful about that, Chigorin. King g7, rook a8, rook to b5, rook to b8. Now his clan is clear. Double on the last rank and just win that bishop. Black plays c5 though. And this is where things started to go wrong. Because, you know, after c5, black took this pawn. And after rook a8, queen f8. Now, I can't remember if white is still winning here. Okay, white is. Queen takes c5. Um, basically, my analysis is queen b4, b6, knight to d5. And the bishop is still pretty much trapped, and we're threatening knight c7. And if, if rook takes pawn, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen takes, d6. 
But Sinus just didn't kind of, or Chigorin didn't really feel the urgency here. And after after takes, played knight c4, which allows rook c6, a horrible move to allow. Because that rook is really nice there and defends the, the bishop on c8. And after f4, b5. Of course, he has no care in the world of rook takes pawn. Because he got to go bishop a6. And huge disaster for Jigorin. This bishop, which was basically a big pawn on c It wasn't even a pawn. Because it couldn't move at all. It wasn't going to become a queen any day. It was just a complete piece of rubbish. And now it's into the game. And even though white... Um, wins a pawn. I don't know if he does win a pawn. Somehow his queen takes e4, so I must have skipped a move. I totally did. My apologies. Uh, after b5, um, what? Oh, sorry, I skipped. How'd the rook get back to a1? Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, I totally skipped this move. Knight c4. And now b5 is very strong. Bishop a6. Rook takes, queen takes. Rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, queen e4. White's up a pawn, but the bishop's into the game now. And his winning chances are, are pretty much gone. Queen takes f4, h3, bishop b7. And in about in a few more moves, this game was agreed drawn. So another huge collapse from Chigorin. At least he didn't lose this time. But to go from a position where this bishop is just encased in basically prison on the chessboard uh, to where it gets out and actually takes part in the endgame and helps him draw. Chigorin's technique was just a little off this game. He should not have ever given Black the chance to take one of the, either the B or the D pawns. Um, but he was a little impatient, and it cost him. And with this draw, Steinitz won the match. This was the end, uh, ten and a half, six and a half. And the end to an interesting match, the first ever huge theoretical opening debate that I've seen. Um, and I think Chigorin won that debate cleanly. I mean, he had so many good positions in that Evans Gambit. He just didn't quite convert this one, game 15, and very rarely does Steinitz get a good position out of the opening with black. So Chigorin's opening play with white was a huge success. But his technique in some of these games left a lot to be desired. With the white pieces, Steinitz did quite well in this match. However, uh, so Steinitz is now the undisputed world champion, and he has a match coming up next. I think it's in 1890 or maybe 1891. Again, uh, 1890 against a guy named uh, what's his name, Isidore Gunsberg. Not many people have ever heard of this guy, but he did play for the world championship, and we will be looking at that match next. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.